All right, so thanks for coming, everyone. Um, today, we're very happy to have uh, Yu Gu um, from Carnegie Mellon. who will tell us about a central limit theorem for KPZ on the Taurus. OK, thanks a lot. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Alex Sapp and Ivan for having me here. It's really a great pleasure. So today, I'll present a recent joint work with um, Tomasz Komorowski, uh, in which we derive a central limit theory for the, uh, for the KPZ equation on the Taurus. So, okay, this is a KPC equation. So it's written down um, 35 years ago by uh, Carter Percy John and considered as the default model for, for interface rules. So it's this SPD, this nonlinear SPD, and there are three terms on the right hand side. You have this um, corresponding to the smooth mechanism, this is corresponding to the lateral groups, this is a noise. And uh, um, of course, when, when, when physicists wrote on this equation, it, they assume that's psi the space time y noise. So it's generalized Gaussian random field with this current function. And basically, if t and x is uh, separate from s and y, then you have independent noise. So, um, OK, so to some extent, the, the, the goal of the physicists and the goal of the mathematicians are the same. So we want to understand the large scale behavior of this h. So we start from, um, from some initial interface, then run this equation, then we wait a long period of time and ask ourselves, okay, well, what does the surface look like? So in particular, we um, subtract this, um, subtract mean, so you have a random function which has mean zero. You ask, okay, what's, what's the fluctuations of, of this quantity? What's the size of the variance and uh, what's the statistics? Mm -hmm. uh, another question you ask is that uh, whether uh, there's some universal behavior, because as I mentioned, okay, so, it's considered as a default model for the, for the interface groups, but it's just one model. Okay? So there are many models you, which you can use to, to describe the groups of the interface. So for instance, from the SPD point of view, you can, you can, you can change this Laplacian uh, operator, or you can change this nonlinear term, or you can change this noise. So whether the large scale behavior you obtain uh, for this equation uh, is representative, so to speak, so, um, so um, can you see the same, or can you see, can you make similar conclusions for other models? Um, okay, so before talking about large scale universality here, um, I'd like to spend this slide um, discussing the small scale singularity. So, um, so as I mentioned, this psi here, the space time y noise, so it's a, it's, it's a Gaussian process. It's not function value, it's distribution value, so random short distribution. So it has very bad regularity. So in particular, then this grad of h is not a function, it's a distribution. So how do you define this grad h square? How do you, how do you make sense of now in your term? So um, during the past 10 years, there, there have been a lot of progresses in making sense of this equation in d equal to one. So, um, okay, so start here from the work from Martin here, then it's on Kukinani and Kader and Prokofsky and Kukinani and so on. So, okay, so to make sense of this equation, to, to, to fight the small scale singularity, um, it doesn't matter that much whether you are, you are on the torus or um, on, on the line, because it's a small scale singularity uh, you're fighting with. So, so I'm not saying that go from the torus to, uh, to the real line is, is, is straightforward. So sometimes it's, it's, it's highly long trivial, but it's, um, it's difficult. I mean, it's some different uh, difficulties you're, you're fighting with. Okay, so um, in D equal to one, you have a, a well-developed solution theory for this equation. If you want to study the large scale behavior, then you can, you can just look at the solution to this equation, then say T to infinity, then ask yourself, okay, what happens? So in D equal to two, um, you're not expected to make sense of this equation in this form. So, so, so uh, what you can do is to, um, to assume that the, the noise is, um, is smooth, is smooth, okay? So you can, you can either assume that the noise is a smooth, um, smooth Gaussian field, um, or, or, or you can assume that it's only smooth in the spatial variables, as what I did here. I'm assuming that um, the noise is smooth in the spatial variable. So in the time variable, it's, um, the current function is still Dirac, but in the spatial variable, this R is the spatial current function. I'm assuming that this R is, is very smooth. Okay? So then there's no problem with making sense of this equation. And uh, um, 
So to study the large scale behavior here, um, for instance, I just need to assume that the uh, uh, noise uh, decorrelates sufficiently fast here. I'm assuming that R is compact quality, which means the, uh, the noise is uh, of finite range of dependence. So, 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 so as long as the noise decorrelates sufficiently fast, you expect, you expect a similar uh, large scale behavior. Okay, so uh, now let me uh, let me talk about um, the large scale universal behavior. So that's R. R. So um, by now, I think um, um, uh, people understand that okay, under this one, two, three scaling, so you have one here, F one actually. Under this one, two, three scaling here, then you center your uh, your 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 height function that should convert to the uh, so called KPZ fixed point, which is a Markov process. And uh, um, there have been a lot of um, progress in, in in this direction, and in particular in last year by Jeremy Costello and Shiro Sakara, and also by Bunny Weirak, somehow now from Toronto. So they prove these results. So so you look at the solution to the KPZ, you do this one to three scaling, you look at the fluctuation, the fluctuation is described by the, by the fixed point. And here I only list the uh, on some of the papers related to the equation itself. And as I mentioned uh, in, my first slide, in my first slide, there are many models in the university class. So, so um, this direct polymer and uh, interacting product systems and last pass speculation and so on. So there are many results in this direction, uh, improving um, this scaling here and improving uh, the convergence to the, to the fixed point. And very little is known in the grid type two two. So in high dimensions, almost nothing is known. So our question is that okay, what happens on the torus? So so um, so in my previous slide, I was talking about the small scale singularity. So if you are, if you are, if you, if you only look at small scale singularity, then whether you are on the torus or on the whole line it doesn't matter that much because um, the small scale doesn't see the boundaries. But if you are talking about large scale behavior, you say t to infinity, then it's dynamics. It will feel the boundary if you are in the boundary domain. So presumably the, the, uh, the behavior will be very different. And that's indeed what we prove here. So okay, as suggested by the title of my talk, we'll show that um, on the torus you have Gaussian fluctuations. So um, before presenting the main result, um, let me say something about the, um, um, the stochastic equation and its connection to the direct polymer because that's what uh, our approach will be based on. So um, this is the KPZ equation. Okay, so in the case of um, uh, one plus one space time Y noise, this is purely symbolic because okay, there's, there's no such term. Um, but let's do uh, do this transformation. This is called the half goal transformation here. Introduce a parameter beta, which will uh, which will okay. So I'll explain later why uh, introduce this parameter beta. So you do this transformation, and then formally you you. You arrive at this this linear equation. This is so-called the cascade equation with uh, multiplicative noise. So you have u multiplied psi here. So um, one thing I I like to mention that although this equation here is linear, but if you look at the coefficient to solution map, so go from psi to u, this is a highly non-linear, non-local map. So um, for this equation, for the cascade equation in d equal to one for space-time white noise, there's a well-developed solution, I mean, solution theory. And and turns out that if you if you just take the h to be here, I have beta, so it's one over beta log of u. This is so-called the half co solution. That's indeed the physical solution. So I mean by by physical, I mean that's a solution uh, that is uh, made sense of by, by Martin Hare and Gumilani and so on. So uh, so for for our purpose, we'll just study this equation. Uh, then we'll just look at log of u. And in high dimensions, I can just assume that the noise is white in time and smooth in space. Then in this case, there's no uh, there's no problem with making sense of this equation and this equation because you both u and h will be smooth in space, so the derivative makes sense. So as I mentioned, then uh, studying the large scale behavior of h reduces to this to studying a lot of field. Okay? So that 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 uh, this is will be. Um, how we how we approach this problem? We don't directly study h because, uh, as I mentioned, for the one plus one uh, space time white noise case, this is uh, you have this truly singular SPD, and uh, we want to avoid dealing with that. So we we'll just study a lot of you. So um, that's one drawback of this approach, which is if you want to if you want to study uh, a more general um, 
time Jacobi equation. For instance, you don't look at this quadratic nonlinear term. Instead, you look at some phi of gray H, where phi is not necessarily quadratic. Then this approach will not work because there's no half good transformation. So we'll, we'll, we'll rely on this half good transformation. So then, um, since you have this linear stochastic equation, you have the finite class formula, which um, gave you the, the, the connection between this problem and direct polymers. So here, I'm assuming that I start from 0x, just use it. That's my initial data. Then I introduce a bond motion that is independent from my, my random environment. So now I have two sources of randomness here. I have a psi, which is my noise. I have a bond motion, which is independent from my noise. Then this expectation here is just taking respect to the bond motion. And the, this E sub X just means that my bond motion starts from X. So that's the, um, that's the Feynman class formula. And it, it helps to express a solution to this SHG in terms of the, um, uh, some average respect to the bond motion. So okay, so this is only for the case when psi is uh, is smooth in the in spatial variable. And now, now you see why I introduce this parameter beta. So beta will appear here. So this factor here will be uh, will be the weight in your Gibbs measure, and then this beta is the inverse temperature. Um, so it's well known that for direct polymer, there's a phase transition in high dimension. So when beta is small, which is a high temperature region, you have diffusive behavior of the polymer. When, when, when beta is large, um, um, which is a low temperature region, you have localization behavior. So, so, um, so uh, this final cast formula uh, gave us this connection between, uh, between the direct polymer and the SHG. But since we'll, we'll be dealing with the, the space time by noise case, so we'll now use the final cast formula. Okay, so now let me present the result. So uh, this is the equation. So we stay on the torus. That's very important. So we start. Okay, we look at the SHG. So we look at the whole flow transformation. We assume that the um, the starting point is just arbitrary measure. So um, in the case when nu is a, a direct measure, then this is called the the KPV with uh, narrow wedge initial data. And I don't know whether it's a name for arbitrary measure, but uh, uh, since we only need to take the log of u, we just need u to be positive. So here we can take arbitrary measure. It doesn't have to be a probability measure. So we consider two cases um, in this work. The first case is d, d equal to y exercise based on my noise, which um, in my view is uh, the most interesting case. Uh, the second case is that we, we, we consider the the high dimensions, so when psi is smooth in space. So when psi is smooth in space, this again, I use this R to denote the coherence function, the spatial coherence function. And with all loss of generality, I just assume the integral R is one. And here's the result. So uh, we can find two positive constants here, gamma and sigma, both positive constants. They only depend on the dimension at R, okay? So, so in the one plus one space time by noise case, they only depend on the dimension. Such that if I look at the fixed point X, then as t go to infinity, I have this weak convergence. So, so, so this is a standard form of a centrinomy theory. Um, so the corresponding law of large numbers is just this h tx divided by t converges to minus gamma. And then you look at the error in your law of large numbers, then this is your, your centrinomy theory. So um, that's the main result. And uh, if you compare it with the, um, with a case of the uh, d equal to one, and we look at the whole pole line, then you have h t. Okay, let's say I, look, I also look at fixed x um, plus gamma t divided by t to the one third. Let's converge it to kp the fixed point. Okay, here I say t to infinity, so it, it, it actually converges to the margin of kp the fixed point. So, um, so the difference is the following case. So the main difference is here. The first difference is that here we have this scaling. We have t to the, uh, we have screw t. So which, which means that the variance grows, grows linearly in time. So that's a concentration case, but here we have super concentration. Um, the second difference of course, is that here we have Gaussian fluctuation, but here we have non-Gaussian fluctuation. Um, the third difference is that for the KPC fixed points, it's a Markov process. So it depends on the starting point. It, depend, it depends on the initial data, but here this, the distribution here has nothing to do, I mean, the limit here has nothing to do with the initial data. The initial data has been completely washed out. So um, this is the result for the fixed point. So I'll, I'll talk about the, um, the process level convergence in the slides. 
So um, before doing that, I'd like to explain the relation uh, to some other works. So you, there's one question in the chat uh -huh. from Wenpin. Um, what's the regularity you assume for R? R is smooth. It doesn't matter actually. So in the paper, in the paper, we we assume R R is smooth, but it it, it doesn't matter. Well, okay, so so we are not striving for the most general condition on R, but uh, that's that's really not uh, not important. First, I, I I think we can just assume R is bounded. So um. So let me explain the, the relation to, to some other works. Okay, so this important model in interacting park system, which we call the, um, the totally symmetric simple exclusion process. So, 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 so of course you can put uh, your park system on the torus. Okay, so that's called the periodic TCF. So for our problem, we, the size of our torus is just one, right? For us, L equal to one, but of course you can, you can, you can, you can change the size of the torus. So in this case, it's so-called the, re, the relaxation Time scale, which is t is l to the three halves. So then l is t to the two thirds. So we have this two thirds here. So that's a critical scale um, under which um, all particles are correlated, so to speak. And uh, then this is this uh, sub relaxation and super relaxation time scale. So in this case, so uh, so the the size of torus is is so large that you don't feel the boundary. So it's 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 more like the uh, the infinite line case, and in this case you wait long enough, long enough. So um so that's more like our case. So for us L L is just one. Okay. So 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 in our case it's just this um corresponding to the super relaxation time scale. So in the recent work by Big um, New and Silva, they 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 show that okay if you look at this periodic case app you look at certain height function, the group Gaussian fluctuations in the, in the super relaxation time scale, which is consistent with our results, of course. Uh, there's, there's one small difference, which is, um, so what they did, if I understand correctly, basically is um, first pass to limits under this scale. So uh, in the relaxation time scale, they pass to limits. Then they send t to infinity. So it's more like a two-step limit here. So of course they have very, uh, very interesting results on the uh, sub I mean, sub-relaxation and relaxation time scale. So that's that's the relation between um, between our results and the uh, and the corresponding results um, in interacting park system. Are, are you able to actually kind of access some analog of this L to the three half? You know, if you do a tuning of the parameters, you can kind of induce an effective L. I don't know. Like okay, I don't know whether our proof will will apply to that case, but I'll say something about that. Just kind of embedded in the scaling of the KPZ equation, right? That you know the fact that with the coefficients all being one, you have a crossover on time, you know, of, of unit order. If you create an effective L, it'll be a crossover on time L's to the three halves, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know whether. Um... Okay, I don't know how to answer this question. Right. So. Um... Okay, I'll think about that. So um, the second thing I want to mention is um, is a co connection to um, to these results. So 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 recently there are many results deriving the so-called Edwards Wilkinson limit of the KPZ equation in high dimensions. Okay, so here's high dimension and on the whole space. So um, okay, so we with Thomas we also proved the the Gaussian fluctuations of the of the KPZ. And here you also have Gaussian fluctuations, so this at root is, uh, is a Gaussian limit. Okay, you also have Gaussian limit for KPC, but um, it's rather different here. So, um, so let me spend some time explaining uh, the difference here. So, so, okay, so this is the uh, this is a formal KPC equation. So what you do is to to smooth the noise. So you have psi epsilon. Then you ask yourself whether whether you get some limit as epsilon equal to zero. So in d equal to one, what is proving is that if you, if you subtract a, a large constant c epsilon, then this h will convert to, to the limit. Then they define the limit as a solution to a KPZ. So you can ask yourself the same question in high dimension. So in high dimension, you look at this equation of smooth noise, then, then that's well defined. Then what you should do to, to, to get some limit. 
So it, it turns out that it doesn't matter which constant you subtract here, you will not have convergence. So the right thing to do is to multiply a small parameter here, beta epsilon. So, that, so, so, so that's precisely what uh, is written here. So if, if, if you multiply some beta epsilon, okay, if, okay, then you tune this beta epsilon. If this beta epsilon is small enough, then in the limit, this term will just disappear. That's not interesting. So then you just find the right, right size of this beta epsilon so that you see something non-trivial from this, from this non-inner term. And it turns out that the, um, the right choice of beta epsilon is just this one. Okay? So when d equal to two, it's like one over square root of log epsilon. When d equal to three, it's epsilon to some positive power depending on the, depending on the dimension. Then what is proved is that, okay, I, I, I still have a parameter here, this beta hat. Then what is proved is that, I think I listed everything here. Okay, so in this works, um, what is proved is that if this beta hat is small enough, okay, so there's some critical value of, of beta hat, which you can compute exclusively, then uh, you look at the centered interface, then um, you have convergence to some capital H, and this capital H solves this equation. So, so, so what happens is that this Ksi epsilon will of course convert to Ksi, but this nonlinear term after centering will convert to some independent noise. So the eta here will be a space time by noise that is independent from Ksi. And this new effective is an effective variance. So this equation is a so-called um, Edwards weakness equation, which is a, a stochastic equation with additive noise. So the solution is, is pretty explicit. It's just the, um, the heat kernel convolve with the, the noise. So it's, it's a Gaussian limit. So here you also have the fluctuation of the KPZ convert to some Gaussian limits in this weak disorder region. So um, the difference, the difference for our result is the following. Okay, so first of all, here the convergence is as random Schwarz distributions, which means we 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 take this function we multiply test function, then it it, it converges to this capital H multiply the same test function. So um, but we have pointwise convergence there. So uh, the main result I presented uh, is the pointwise convergence. Uh, the second difference is that the Gaussianity here, okay, so here you, you, you have Gaussian limits, but the Gaussianity here is really a result of this, um, this weak disorder. So it's related to the fact that um, in, in high dimensions in degree turn to three, the direct polymer is diffusive when, uh, when you are in the high temperature regime. So, uh, so that's the difference. So there's also this important relation to um, to the so-called Casperger's equation. So so we have KPZ, we have we have SHG, then the Spurgers. So if you if you if you take this equation, then you just take the derivative. Then um, formally you would just solve this equation. That's a Burgers equation. So of course this Burgers equation is very important um, in particular. Uh, I mean, given its connection to uh, to particle systems. Uh, for me, for me, the reason why it's interesting, okay, the reason why this object is is important is because the nonlinear term here is precisely a half u square. So, uh, if you want to understand the large scale behavior of this h, this term, um, you know very well about these terms, space time, y noise. So, you just need to know this well. So, 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 in other words, if you have very good understanding of the solution to the Burgers equation, then then you have a very good understanding of the H. So, um, so in the recent work by by Gugnani and Prokofsky, they studied the um, the generator of this this equation. Okay, so this equation um, generates a Markov process. Then they study the generator associated with this Markov process. So, of course, they do it for the uh, for the case of space time noise. So that's that's a singular case. And one, one of the um, consequence of the result is that it proved the uh, um, certain type of geometric applicity for this U on torus. So, so as I mentioned, this part is basically a half U square. So if you know that this U mixes very fast, then presumably this, uh, this will help you to, to show that this H has, uh, has Gaussian fluctuation on the torus. So that's, that's maybe another way of uh, of looking at this uh, this Gaussian fluctuation for the KP down the torus. Um, but as I mentioned, we'll avoid uh, dealing with the singularity of the SAP. So we'll, we'll, we'll study a different quantity. So we'll focus on the SHG, of course. So, uh, and, and for us, the key quantity is the endpoint distribution of the direct polymer. So you here solve this SHG and I just normalize this U. Okay? And this denominator here is actually the partition function of the, of the direct polymer. So I just use Z to denote this, this integral. 
So, so as you can see, that this is positive, it integrates to one, so that's a density, and it's random, so it's random density. So that's the that, that's endpoint distribution of the point. So, so, so for us, we don't use the solution to burgers to drive the CLT. We use this quantity to drive the CLT. And uh, it's interesting to observe that, okay, there's some similarity because if we look at U, U is a derivative of H, which is a derivative log of U. So let's grab U over U. So the important thing here is actually, you should look at the ratio. So you, you have some, something associated with U divided by something associated with U. Here it's the same, it's U divided by the integral. So, so, um, so that's different from the, um, from the from the case of, um, for instance, d greater to three, and uh, uh, we have a small parameter there. There, um, u or h, they, they stabilize this. Um, uh, but, but here, u or h, they, they, they don't stabilize, but, but this capital U stabilize, and this row stabilize. Yeah, so, okay, so that's all I want to say about the relation to, um, to other works. So uh, now let me let me say something about the process level convergence. So so remember that our main result is HTX plus gamma t divided by square root t convert to Gaussi, and that's for fixed x. Okay? So uh, one of our result is that if I, if I look at this endpoint distribution of the direct polymer, which is just this term, okay? so this uh, for each t this is a random variable taking value in the space of continuous functions. So we can show that convergence distribution. It converges to some stationary distribution as t goes to infinity. But you see that you have log of rho, basically it's log of u, so it's h minus log of z. Okay. Okay, so okay, so first of all, this proposition implies that if I take the log, I also have the convergence because everything is positive. Then we show the fluctuation of free energy. So um so we show that, okay, so Z, the partition function log of Z, the, the free energy, we show the same result for the, um, for the free energy. Then, okay, as I, as I wrote, so I have log of rho is H minus log of Z. Oh, so that's, okay, that's what exactly what I wrote here. So um, log of rho is of order one. So this object was stabilized. So, which means if you have the fluctuation of free energy in this form, you have this, the fluctuation of the H for any X. So that's, that's the main result I presented. Also, you can, you can do the following. So if you look at HTX minus HT zero, so that's, that's, when you are, that's like when you're standing at X, I mean, standing at X equal to zero, then move, move along the interface. This is, this is a, the profile of the interface uh, uh, you observe. So um, but that's precisely this, but that, that convert to that. Okay. So, so, so the picture is the following. So um, if, you, if, you, if you stand, if you, if you move along the interface, then what you see is something that stabilizes, but the, the moving frame itself will, will, will satisfy a centrinity theory in this form. Then of course, okay, in the case of one plus one space time white noise, you know that this thing here, will be a bond bridge. So, so our result implies the convergence, but so we're not able to uh, identify uh, the bond bridge as, the, as a limit in this case. Okay, so any questions? Because I'll go to the rest of the talk. Okay. So here's a plan for the rest of the talk. So first of all, I'll say, I'll say something about the, um, the endpoint distribution of the direct polymer. Then, then I'll explain how, how we prove the result, which is um, basically a homogenization type of approach. So we construct some character, then do a multiple decomposition, then um, um, use a marking view theory. And uh, um, a key ingredient is to show that the, uh, the underlying process, for, for, for us, the, the underlying process is just this rho, rho tx. Is the endpoint distribution of the direct polymer. You should show the, the geometry algorithm of that. And for that, we use nice method. So, um, okay, so let me first say something about the endpoint distribution of direct polymer. So I, I look at this SHE, and now, okay, for simplicity, I just start from direct initial data. So um, by Feynman Katz formula, 
this u can be written in this form. So let's just uh, I do a change of variable, then I do a time reversal. So you see that basically it's time. I mean, it's it's a bond bridge starting from zero, ending at x. Then the endpoint distribution of the polymer I'm interested in is written in this form. So that's that's my definition, and it's, it's basically it's just this. And then you see pretty clearly why uh, that's the endpoint distribution of the direct polymer, because this part is a Gibbs measure. So uh, it turns out this is a Markov process taking value in the space of probability measures. That's because this equation is linear. So if you know the um, if you know the value of this process at t, then you just uh, you you just use that as a as initial condition. You solve this equation, then you you normalize. You get to, you get this row uh, at s greater than t. So it's a Markov process. That's important to us. So uh, our study of the evolution of this uh, of these quantities related to uh, um, the recent work of um, Every Base, Shrev Chatterjee, Broker, Mukherjee, and uh, Yuri Bakhtin, still here. So uh, okay, so this slide is um, okay. So let me go over this. So um, that's the endpoint distribution of the polymer. And I look at SHE. So um, for this SHE, I have the mild formulation. So PT here is just the, the heat kernel here. U0 is the initial data. Here I'm, I can just assume that U0 is, 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 is a probability distribution. Okay, it's actual probability measure, for instance. Then if I look at the Pagini function, it's well known that the, the Pagini function is a positive martingale. So I just integrate this UTX, I get the Pagini function. So that's just one. And the reason why it's one is because uh, I'm assuming that this U0, for instance, you can just assume U0 is a drug. So then it's, it's martingale here. So the key here is that we consider this quantity. So since Z is a positive martingale, we consider we okay, we consider this SDE. So M is also a martingale. And Z, Z is written as e to the m subtract one half this quadratic variation. Okay, but what is m? So dm is dz over z. dz is just this part. So dz over z, you have u over z, but u over z just rho. Okay, so u over z just my rho. So m just this thing. So the Martin goal m here is precisely the endpoint distribution of my direct polymer integrated against my space time noise. I mean, okay. integrated against my noise. It doesn't have to be space time noise. So then the quadratic variation just takes this form. So let me remind you that this R here, Rx minus Y is just, uh, okay, so if you compute uh, Sx, Xi, Ty, then just this thing, right? So this is my, my spatial coherence function of my, uh, of my noise. So twice quadratic variation takes this form. And um, so, so I can just define some calligraphic R here applied to the endpoint distribution of my polymer that gives me this integral. So, so, so in particular, in the case of space time, when noise when R is Dirac, that's just a, so this calligraphic R applied to rho is just the L2 norm of rho. So that's the intersect. So, 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 so basically this term is the intersection of two independent polymer paths. So it's okay. So after integration in time, so this term is uh, the intersection time of two independent polymer paths. Then the quantity we're interested in, which is a free energy here, is this n subtract a half square iteration. Now you see how you should proceed. Okay, you have a you have a martingale here. Then you have some additive function of my rho. Okay, rho is a Markov process. So if you can prove some mixing property of this rho, then presumably you can prime martingale CLT to show, to show that after scaling this will convert to Gaussian. Then you also have Gaussianity coming from this part. So it's additive function of Markov process. So, so maybe you can apply something that keeps the bar down. So, um, okay, so let's see. Okay, so this is just what I, what I wrote. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as I mentioned, the, the first step is to show, it, to show certain mixing property of this process role. And then the second step is to, okay, if you have, if, if you have enough mixing from, from, from the row, you know how to deal with a martingale, but you still need to deal with this additive function of this row. So you need to uh, extract the martingale part of, from, from this term. Then a rather standard thing to do is to solve a Poisson equation. This L here is a generator of, of, of this row. 
equation. And uh, to solve to solve Poisson equation, I need the right hand side to have mean zero. So this expression of R is uh, the expression of this R uh, under the inverse measure of this row, if rho has a inverse measure. Then, um, then you apply Ito formula, that's what you get. So chi is so-called corrector. You apply Ito formula, you get the drift, that's a drift. Then you have a Martin term. Then this drift is precisely what you're interested in. It's just this term, okay, centered. So, so now you can just try to apply Martin CLT. So what you're interested in is just log ZT. So it's just M subtract its a half quadratic variation. Then after centering, that's precisely the combination of those two martingales divided by square t plus some remainder. And then if you have good control on, on this character, then divide by square t, that this remainder will just disappear as t, t goes to infinity. So this, this is very similar to, um, to what you do in homogenization. We want to show that some reversible diffusion converted to a bond motion, you decompose your, your diffusion uh, into a martingale and a drift. And for the drift, you construct a, a character to extract the martingale part from the drift. Then you combine that martingale with your original martingale. You apply martingale CLT to your total martingale. Then you show that the remainder go to zero. So that's exactly the, it's, it's almost exactly the same idea here. Um, okay, so, so what is missing here is one thing that is missing is to show the mixing property of this row. Uh, another thing that is missing is to, uh, if you want to apply ETO formula here, you, then you need to have some, some dynamics of this row because, okay, rho is a Markov process. So, so and your underlying noise is just this um, Y noise. So presu presumably rho will satisfy some SPD. So you'll, you'll need to use that SPD to, to get the explicit expression of this martingale here. So uh, I'll first look at the evolution of this rho. So I look at this SHE and uh, I'm assuming that's okay. I have this current function and rho is just this uh, normalized uh, uh, U. Then what we can show is that rho satisfy this um, non-local, non-linear SPD. So just apply it to formula, basically. You get this equation. So, um, okay, so what's next? Okay, so, so of course, as I mentioned, we need to show that rho mixes very fast, but of course we don't use this SPD to show rho mixes very fast. We, we use this expression itself to, to show rho mixes very fast. And the places where we use this SPD is just to, just when we apply ETO formula to this chi of rho t, to the character of rho t. Um, then we have, um, the, so, okay, so basically we need the marginal term on that. Okay, uh, on a different note, um, okay, so, so everything I did here uh, is not restricted to the torus, okay? So we can, I, can do, I can do this on the whole line. So you can, you can, I think this is interesting in itself. So for this row, it's a, it's a random function. So you can try to compute the endpoint correlation function. So let, let me just define the endpoint correlation function of this row. So it turns out that it's QN, which is a sequence of dismissive function, solves so the PD hierarchy. And the reason why it's a hierarchy is because, okay, just imagine that you take the expression on this equation, on this equation, you take the expression, then the marginal part disappear. So you have the expression of rho, the expression of rho, that's my Q1. But here you have three copies of rho. So when you take the expression, you'll have Q3, the three point correlation function. Here you have two copies of rho. When you take the expression, you have Q2. So then the evolution of Q1 is related to Q2 and Q3. The evolution of Q2 is related to Q3 and Q4 and so on. So that's a hierarchy. So, so, so maybe this will be a different way of studying the direct point. But of course we don't use this here. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's the, the evolution of this row. Now, uh, let me explain how we prove the mixing property. So we use this, um, the SNIS method. So it's on this paper, okay, 30 years ago by, by SNI. So, um, well, okay, what we do is, so the first step is just a simple factorization. So here, um, Okay, so here I introduce a notation. Z here is a propagator of my SHE from SY to TX. So basically, uh, if this point is S on Y, I put at this point a Dirac, uh, a Dirac function, then, okay, TX is here. Then I, I, I solve the SHE with the initial condition here, which is Dirac function. Then I value my SHE at TX. That's my, that's my ZTS. Then um, I, have, I have this expression for my for the solution of my SHE. So, um, so this, is, this looks a bit like 
product of random matrix. I mean, you have you have you have you have independent, uh, actually identical duplicate uh, random operators. I mean, compose with each other. So we'll we'll make use of this expression. Okay, so that's expression. And the second step is a uh, is a very important step. And according to SNI, if you see this kind of expression, then it's a standard it's a standard it's a standard thing to do in statistical mechanics to construct a Markov chain. Okay, so we'll construct a Markov chain. So let, let's say this is my t. I have t minus one here. T minus two, this is my zero. So uh, I'll construct a Markov chain that runs backward in time. So I have y one here, y two here. Okay, I have y n here. So okay, I'll start from y n, then go to y n minus one, then go to y two, then go to y one. So the transition probability from y two to y one is given by this fact. So it's clear uh, transition transition probability. So so I have the first factor here actually. Then um, the transition from y3 to y2 is given by this thing. So um, the denominator is not very important here. Just look at the numerator. So I integrate in y1 prime variable. So you see that this factor here precisely cancel this factor. So I get z, I, ha I have z y1 y2 multiply z y2 y3. So that's precisely this term multiply this term. Okay. So, so I just keep doing this. Then in this way, I can write my solution to the SHE in this simple form. So um, this part is just the, the joint density. This is the joint, okay. This part is the joint density of my YN, YN minus one up to Y1. But I still, okay, I, I have some factor here. Let's just count some factor that doesn't depend on it. Okay, it depends on T, but it doesn't depend on X. It's a, it's a random constant. Then I can express my u as the expectation with respect to this Markov chain of, of this thing here. Because that's precisely, it's, it's just this multiply the joint density of y n up to y1. So, so now the endpoint distribution I'm interested in, I have this ratio here, as I mentioned, it's important to have the ratio here. So this constant just disappear. So now I, 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 I express the, the object I'm interested in in this compact form. As a dependence of my role on, on, the, on the far away running environment is only through this y1. So if you want to show that role mixes very fast, you just need to show that this mock chain mixes very fast. So okay. you could you say quickly, how does this Markov chain you constructed, is this related at all to the Brownian motion showing up in the Feynman Katz formula? No, 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 no. Totally okay, nothing. Uh, here, 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 we don't have Brownian motion at all, right? So I don't use Feynman Katz. So 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 basically just I start from this factor here. I mean I start from this formula. Then I define transition density in this way. Then somehow this factor, the whole the whole thing here can be written as the first term multiply the joint density of my Markov chain. So it's a random Markov chain. Can you think of this as like the, the conditional distribution? You know, if you have your polymer measure and you ask for a Markov yes. chain that yeah. yes. transition properly for its marginals? Yeah. Yes, I, th I think you're right, yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned, now, now the whole thing reduces to study the, um, the fast mixing of this Markov chain. Okay, so so far I haven't used a torus at all. So the place where we use a torus is here. Okay, so let me. Okay, so the transition the transition density here can be bounded. Okay, this looks complicated. It's not. Okay, so 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 can be bounded by some inf uh, divided by soup. Okay, so and this function here is a continuous function that is strictly positive and you're on torus. So you have some lower bound. So, 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 so it, it turns out that, okay, so, so if you look at this function here, let me draw a picture here. So um, this, this point is T minus K plus one. This is T minus K. This is T minus K minus one. So this function here only depends on the random environment in this I mean, when S is between this interval, okay. 
Okay, so S is between T minus K minus one and T minus K plus one. So, um, and uh, you can find an event. Okay, so, so basically this event is just the event such as this factor is greater than delta. Okay, so if this factor is greater than delta, the, then the inf of the uh, of the transition kernel is greater than delta. Okay, so here the inf and sup are taken um, with respect to those variables. Okay, so to the variables here. So uh, you can find you can find the part constant that only depends on the dimension and the uh, the spatial covariance function, such as um, the the probability of this event strictly positive, and on this event, the transition kernel is strictly positive. That's where we use torus, okay? because you take the you take the inf of a positive function on the torus. That's strict. I mean, that's still positive. It's not zero. I mean, if if it's on the whole space, then this inf will be zero. But when you're when you have this thing, you know what to do. You just do a coupling, and then 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 whenever this happens, you have renewing because you have a, you have a positive probability to sample from uniform measure. Then after renew, you forget about the past. So 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 that's the um, um, that's you a key don't, point. Don't don't you need this at different times, kind of simultaneously? Or no, or you just need at one time, right? Just at one time. Yeah, because because as long as you renew once, then you forget about the past. So then, what we show is that for any t greater than s. This is T, this is S, this is my zero. I can approximate the endpoint distribution of my directly polymer at this point by some random variable that only depends on the random environment here. And uh, I can control the error. The error decays to zero exponentially fast as, as, as the distance between S and T uh, goes to infinity. Now you have geometry of this key, basically. So that's, uh, this is a key, um, one of the key ingredients. In, in, in our argument, so we, we we follow this nice approach to to show the mixing of this um, of this uh, endpoint distribution of the direct polynomial. Then we um, apply this um, homogenization type of approach to prove central new theory, basically. Okay, so uh, now okay, let me let me summarize. Um, okay, so um, I need to be away for ten seconds. Excuse me. Okay, sorry about that. So, okay, here's a summary. So um, we look at this problem, right? We keep it on the torus. So that's, excuse me. That's my SHE, that's my KPZ, that's my partition function, that's my endpoint distribution of the direct polymer. So we first prove that the endpoint distribution of the direct polymer stabilizes on the torus. Then we show that the free energy has this Gaussian fluctuation. Then combine those two results, we see that's okay, the solution to the KPZ has this Gaussian fluctuation. And uh, um, several, several ingredients um, needed in our proof are here. So, so, so first of all, we do this important decomposition. We write the free energy as a marginal subtract to half of its quadratic variation. And uh, both of marginal and quadratic variation are driven by, by this role. Then we show that uh, this row mixes very fast. Then it's a, it's a standard uh, homogenization type of argument. So uh, let me list a few questions. So the first question is that, okay, so we derive the non-local SPD for this row. And as I mentioned, uh, okay, so we show that the row will convert to row infinity. But we're not able to identify this row infinity. And as I mentioned, in the case of one plus one space time, why noise the the right distribution for this row should just be, be this thing, right? Because rho, okay, u u is e to the h, and the right distribution for h is um is bond bridge. So this 
So the then the image description for, for this row just listing where B is a bond bridge. So it's very natural to ask whether we can show this. So 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 I think typically um, when people show why noise environment under burgers or, or or bond bridges environment under under KPZ, they use some discrete approximation or, or some other approximation of the KPZ. Um, a second question is, um, as I mentioned, okay, um, my first. Um, so we rely on this half code, okay? So so we study we study this role, right? So this this depends on the half code. So for for general Hamming Jacobi equation, if you have a phi here, if 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 you're on the torus, you, you expect a similar result, which is H uh, has Gaussian fluctuations. Then how do you prove this result? Then presumably you, you you have to make use of the mixing of gradage. So 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 I think that's more uh, like uh, uh, an analytic question. Maybe. So maybe Alex knows how to do that. Um, of course, the real the real problem is that can we um, can we say something about the, the infinite nine and, and the case when okay maybe the, the size of torus goes with respect to time. I mean, with respect to time. So can we use some of the ingredients and some of the ideas? Um, uh, uh, in our approach to to at least say something about um, um, the case when you don't have a fixed torus, so uh, I think I think that's pretty much it. So I'll stop here and uh, thanks for your attention. Thanks a lot. Um, do we have questions, from the audience? Feel free to just unmute yourself and ask a question. I'll ask a question, another question. Um, so if, if you look at the KPZ equation on, or you know, burgers or whatever, on, on an interval with boundary conditions, uh -huh. like, like I've looked at recently with Lisa Kniesel, um, it, you know, would your approach apply to, to this? Would it Im imply some sort of Gaussian fluctuation for the overall height? Or does the boundary condition really screw things up? I don't know. Um, well, you should know this better, right? So, so for the KPZ on the on the finite interval, does does the boundary condition affect the long long long, long time fluctuation? I don't have a I don't have a major answer to. to it, it, it certainly affects the the speed, but I, I'm not sure. I mean, you need to think about whether it affects the sort of stationary height fluctuation. Also, so you you said your approach doesn't give you the invariant measure, right? It, it, no, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, I, I okay. Off the top of my head, I don't I don't have an answer to to this question whether um, whether the boundary condition will play a role. You know, do you still have a transformation into a polymer? Yeah, yeah. All of that sort of stuff works in one D. Okay, thanks. Could you say a little more about you had this? Um, what do you call it? It's like it's almost like a Dublin condition for the yeah for the mixing. Could you say a little bit about what? Is it easy to say like what you need to know about the noise for that good event to happen? Right. So uh, let's see. So so basically, we need this condition, right? So um, in the in the set with positive prob probability, the 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 um, the transition density is strictly positive. So. So basically, you just you just need to look at this quantity, okay? So you want to show that this quantity is um, is away from 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 zero. So you need the moment bound of the denominator, and you need the negative moment bound of the of the numerator. So so basically, what you need is a bound on the the positive and negative moment bound on the Green's function of the SHE. Yeah, if you have that, then you have this. Uh -huh. But is, can you say kind of, is there any kind of intuitive explanation of like, should the noise be like in order to get this, because it's, it's a random event, right? So in terms of the underlying white noise, can you say like what, what it should look like to have? No, um, okay. Um, I don't know. Okay, I can, I can say that I need this quantity to be greater than delta, but I don't know what that's implied <laughs> uh <-huh. Okay. laughs> sure. for the noise. And to control those moments, you use like the stuff like Moreno Flores. Was yeah, there. yeah, exactly. So for the for the for the negative 
moments, we use concentration basically, yeah. And although it's Green's function here, but you are going from one point to this point plus one, so you are away from the singularity, so there's no problem with that. Any other questions? All right, should we thank you again? Thanks a lot.